Number 43. A basketball referee tosses the ball straight up for the starting tip-off. At what velocity must a basketball player leave the ground to rise 1.25 meters above the floor in an attempt to get the ball? All right. So let's draw a little picture. All right. So here's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he's going to jump, right, to some, some height, okay? Now, it tells us the height, right? It tells us that the height that he's going to jump is going to be, um, I'll call it X because it's the displacement, 1.25 meters, right? And he's moving in the positive Y direction, therefore it, my displacement will be positive. Okay, so that sounds great. Now, um, they want us to figure out, well, at this point, as soon as he leaves the ground, what is the initial velocity at which he has to impart to himself in order to jump the 1.25 meters? Okay, so it almost sounds like we don't have enough information, but we have to make two other, um, well, one other assumption, and uh, we have to also make note of what the acceleration is in the problem. So as soon as um, Mr. Jabbar leaves the ground, right, he will now be in free fall. Okay, so what that means is that as soon as he leaves the ground and his body's floating, the, floating in the air, all right, the acceleration that his body will be experiencing will be the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. So that's an important underlying fact that is not mentioned in the problem, but you must know that. So basically that has to be memorized. The other part that it's not totally clear, but it has to be the assumption, is that eventually when he reaches the top point of his jump, right, for a fraction, fraction of a second, that velocity there is zero, right? So the final velocity in this problem will be zero meters per second, okay? So all freely falling bodies have this, you know, uh, pattern to them, meaning they, if, the, if something is thrown upward or moving upward, It'll eventually reach a high point and then come back down. And at this high point, you will always know, always know that the velocity here will be zero. Okay, this will be a final velocity if you're talking about this particular point here as the start, right? Assuming it travels up this way and then comes back down on that side. Okay, um, or it might be an initial velocity if you're considering the, the path from the top to then the bottom, just this half. So it depends, all right, what you want to call it. Remember, it's all relative. All right, so let's just erase that. So now um, we should have enough information that we need to uh, know in order to solve the problem. So now the question is, all right, what is uh, his initial velocity? So here's the initial velocity, that's the question. And let's see what we're given. So we're given the final velocity, acceleration, and a displacement. So take a look at the formulas on the right-hand side. Are there any formulas that relate those four variables together? And yeah, there is, right? Number four. Great, so let's write it down. So the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So final velocity is zero, so that's zero squared. Initial velocity is what we're looking for. Then it's two times the acceleration, which is negative 9.80. And then the displacement, they said he jumped, right, 1.25 meters. Okay, wonderful. So this is zero is equal to vi squared. And now this comes out to be a negative term. So let's multiply it. So it's going to be 2 times negative 9.8 times 1.25. The answer comes out to be negative 24, 24.5. Got three sig figs, so that's great. Now add this on over, 24.5, to the left-hand side. That cancels, right? So now we have 24.5 is equal to vi squared. To solve for vi squared, excuse me, to solve for vi, you have to get rid of the square, and therefore we take the square root. And what we do to one side, we got to do to the other. So now the initial velocity will be, so simply just take the square root of 24.5. And now remember, anytime you take a square root, the values always come out to be positive and negative, right? So the, so the, uh, answer that comes out here will be positive or negative 4.95 meters per second. Now think about this, which, in what direction is he jumping? 
Is he jumping up in the positive y direction or in the negative y? Right, he's, he's jumping up in the positive y direction. Therefore, you choose the positive answer. Okay? So that part you got to think about a little bit, but not too hard. Just consider the direction of motion. Up is positive. Down is negative. To the right, it's positive. To the left, it's negative. All right? So in uh, finishing this out, just writing the final, final answer, it should be 4.95 meters per second. You can put the positive sign there. You don't have to. It's implied that it's positive if, it, if the positive sign is not in. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Not a bad problem at all. Um, but again, if it helped you out at all, please do subscribe. Thank you.